thank you very much to Lingopai for sponsoring this video. Shigeru Miyamoto is not an easy man to work with. At least, that's his opinion of himself. In an interview all the way back in 1986, shortly after the release of Super Mario Bros. on the NES, he said, I'm disliked by the programmers. Of course we decide the main, important aspects of the game beforehand, but as the development goes on, there are lots of small details we update. So they say about me, Hey, if you work with Miyamoto, you'll never know when you're done. Watch out, you'll find yourself overloaded with a mountain of work at the end. In the many decades that have passed since this remark, Miyamoto's reputation has grown and grown. Not only has he cemented his public persona as the father of Mario, and the genius developer behind Nintendo's meteoric rise to the top of the games industry, he's also proven time and time again why his fellow game developers find him so frustrating to work with. The history of Nintendo is filled with tales of Miyamoto, the company's golden child, wrecking everything for those around him. An offhand word here, a careless remark there, and suddenly an entire game project, or indeed an entire gaming franchise, ends up getting dramatically reworked. Before we explore this further, we're very excited to talk about today's sponsor. If you've been with us over the years, you'll have heard KOTOR and I talking about various video game topics we're passionate about. One other thing I'm unashamedly a massive fan of is Korean television and cinema. KOTOR often says I should commit to actually learning Korean, and that's where today's video sponsor comes in. Lingopie is a language learning platform that allows you to watch your favourite shows and music videos directly from the culture of the language you're learning. I have the option to view subtitles in Korean, English, and Romanization alongside one another. Words that I clicked on in the subtitles whilst watching were automatically read out again. I can view the translation, and they were added to my vocabulary list, and I can test myself on them later after watching the episode. Options for self-testing review are flashcards, pop quiz, and wordmaster modes. I swapped the language to German for a bit and watched an information video about self-employment, and then got 100% on my vocabulary test. Good to know that my A-level German is still in my brain somewhere. There is a great variety of content in the app slash on the website itself, but a feature that really appealed was integration with Netflix. Straight away, one of my favourite K-dramas that just happens to be AR video game themed, Memories of the Alhambra, is the first suggestion for content I'd enjoy. Too right! Previously super popular show Squid Game is there if you like your language learning with a side of death and gore. As is It's Okay to Not Be Okay, another K-drama I really enjoyed and I'm happy to re-watch to test the Lingopie features. I have spent so many hours engrossed in binge-watching my favourite K-dramas, and often wished I knew Korean so I could tear my eyes away from the subtitles now and then, and get that giant laundry pile folded while I watch. With that as the goal, I'd better open up Lingopie and get learning Korean. We don't frequently do sponsors on this channel, but Lingopie is one service that we were absolutely hugely excited to collaborate with. Try it out for yourself. Use the link in the description for an exclusive discount. Speaking of foreign vocabulary and phrases, by the way, Nintendo developers have a standard phrase they use to describe it when Miyamoto derails a project mid-development. Whenever anyone shows the legendary developer anything, they brace themselves, lest he flip or upend the tea table. The specific wording differs depending on the translation. This common Japanese expression, meaning to make a huge mess and cause everyone to have to start over on something, perfectly sums up Miyamoto's impact on countless game projects. From wondering whether Samus should have bug eyes to steering the Paper Mario games into a different genre, Miyamoto's suggestions can dramatically alter whatever his fellow developers are working on. Said Zelda producer Eiji Aonuma of his work with Miyamoto on The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, I took everything to Mr. Miyamoto and showed him what we have been working on, and in typical Mr. Miyamoto fashion, he took the tea table and flipped it over. So it was then my job to put the tea table back in order. But together we work to both put the tea table back in order. It's a very enjoyable job, and I'm having a great time doing it. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon director Bryce Holiday has a similar story of table flipping. 
from early in the game's development. Apparently, third-party developers are by no means spared from Miyamoto's whims. He said, For Miyamoto-san's direct involvement with next-level games, he was kind of like a mentor. I believe he uses the word shepherd. He would often come in and steer the ship in a new direction when we were getting off course. At one point, he threw out all the bosses of the game and made us start over. From our angle, that was kind of a tea table flip. But maybe it just had bad legs and was wobbling or something. He often challenged us not to go with our first idea, or to experiment further on different things and then cherry pick our best ideas. Thankfully, only one boss had been fully implemented into the game at the time. But even so, this was a major upheaval for a team that had assumed all had been going well. Not every Nintendo developer is as patient as our new Moral Holiday. Miyamoto's habit of upending the tea table and ruining months or even years of work is, understandably, a source of great frustration for many of his colleagues. The developers who worked on Wii Sports Resort have many terrible tales to tell of the presentation that they dreaded giving to Miyamoto. According to an Iwata Asks interview, each key planner had to stand in front of the notorious producer for an hour, showing off a game mechanic and receiving harsh feedback. Apparently, one poor developer, who has remained anonymous to maintain their dignity, was responsible for the game's archery mechanic. They had been testing the game extensively, and so had become exceptionally good at hitting targets. When it came time to present their work to Miyamoto, though, they just kept missing. Arrows were flying all over the place, according to those in attendance. Said fellow Wii Sports Resort developer, Takayuki Shimamura, If you looked at the screen, you could see that he wasn't able to hold it steady at all. I'd never seen anyone shaking so bad when playing the game, so I said, You're shaking! He replied, it's nerves! Unfortunately, the developer's shaky presentation didn't exactly impress Miyamoto, and they received the lengthy round of negative feedback that they'd been dreading. Miyamoto himself insists that this reputation of flipping the table is often a necessary part of the development process. It doesn't win him any friends in the moment, but it makes for a better game overall. He said, If everyone in the project is just trying to get along with each other, then it could all fall apart. When it gets to that point, I bust it all out in a conference. People refer to that point as the time where I'd knock over the table. I'm not a nice guy. If I was a nice guy, I'd just sidle up to people and say, why don't you do this? But no, sometimes you have to bite down and show that, like, I'm strong. When I flip out, it's because I'm being sincere in my desire to get something done with the project. In another interview, he said, you want to know my reputation among Nintendo staff members? I'm loud and hard on everybody. I stick to minute detailed points. I'm the guy who changes his opinions one after another. And I'm the guy who is still fighting for his opinion past midnight. People who don't know me say that I just spout things out from my gut feeling. But as they come to know me better, they think of me as more of a logical type. For developers working on Nintendo properties, Miyamoto's involvement or oversight typically involves a lot of additional work, and more than a few late nights. As crushing as it may be for developers to be told to start work all over again, the results speak for themselves. Miyamoto's track record for good ideas is unparalleled. He is widely credited with being the driving force behind three of the biggest names in gaming. Super Mario, Donkey Kong, and The Legend of Zelda. Beyond this, other Miyamoto-led game projects that are not quite as well known but still beloved include games like Pikmin, Star Fox, and Nintendogs. More recently, he has been instrumental in the creation of the Super Nintendo World amusement parks in Japan and the United States of America, and the film he produced, the Super Mario Bros. movie, grossed over a billion dollars at the box office, making it one of the most financially successful animated films of all time. Beyond this are the many, many games that Miyamoto has influenced, even if he wasn't a major player in their design process. Most notable is the Pokemon franchise, the single largest merchandising empire on Earth, which owes much of its success to Miyamoto's advocacy and encouragement. There is even a character in the long-running Pokemon series named after Miyamoto, 
showing just how impactful he was during the original development of the brand. Miyamoto's intervention with HAL Laboratories Kirby series very nearly bankrupted the entire company, but the result was a far stronger game that went on to enjoy tremendously healthy sales, and a partnership between HAL and Nintendo that has lasted to the modern day. As a senior figure at Nintendo, Miyamoto has been responsible for training and mentoring generations of up-and-coming developers. His lessons can be seen throughout the entire Nintendo library, and beyond software to the very fabric of the company's game systems. It was Miyamoto's idea, for example, to make the most frequently used buttons on the Nintendo 64 and GameCube controllers larger for ease of use. Miyamoto's track record is not spotless. To argue otherwise would be to ignore the fact that he is a fallible human being. And there have been plenty of times when disgruntled developers and consumers alike have felt that his flipping of the tea table has left games tangibly weaker. Even so, the number of games that have been improved by his suggestions far outweigh the times he's made things worse. How often Miyamoto has ended up ruining a perfectly good game is a matter of personal opinion. Getting your tea table flipped by Shigeru Miyamoto might be a horrible experience, but most Nintendo developers agree it's worth it in the long run. Star Fox and F-Zero artist Takaya Imamura suggests that Miyamoto is a lot friendlier than his reputation suggests, and that when he does come down hard on a development team, it's with good reason. He said, Within the company, he's still seen as very kind. He's only strict with the team he's working with. He has to be strict to make the games turn out so well. Even though I and other people think about games a lot, he's on another level. He thinks about games more than any other person at the company. He sometimes scolded me, but I learned a lot from him. I am most proud of my life to have been able to work with him. For his part, Miyamoto insists that he's learned to be a little more careful about choosing to flip the table. If it destroys too much of his colleagues' work, if it derails a project too far into development, it might not be worth the effort. He said, I might say something in the early stages of development like, what if we didn't do this? Or, if you're going to do that, then what about this? But I no longer come in mid-development to completely rework things. I don't upend the tea table just as a hobby or something. I only do so if I can see how the whole game will pan out. By changing the structure of things when a game isn't turning out right, I upend the tea table when I can see how things like the visuals and the merits of the game can change. If I can't see a clear vision for the game, then that doesn't mean something should be changed. After all, you can't see all the key components unless you're the director. It is Miyamoto's eagerness to try out new ideas, to explore new and odd angles of development, and to do things the hard way that have made his creations among the most famous media brands in the entire world. It's difficult to find many games across the past four decades of Nintendo's recent history that haven't in some way been impacted by Miyamoto's input. The Maverick creator's table flipping has far-reaching consequences for all of Nintendo, which means he's managed to upset more than a few developers during his career, and made more than a few games sparkle brighter than they might have done without his input. Yet, in telling this man's story, the story of a young comic artist turned bluegrass musician turned tech whiz kid, it's important to emphasise just how annoying he is to work with. There's a temptation with men like Miyamoto to assume that his genius is absolute, that his creations launched fully formed from his own mind, and that he and he alone is responsible for the art that bears his name. To give Miyamoto this much credit, though, does a disservice to every other developer that has worked on his games. Miyamoto, after all, is not a programmer. Nor is he a musician, nor a marketer, nor a lawyer, nor a cleaner, nor a cook, nor a housewife. If Shigeru Miyamoto is, as he claims, the father of Mario, then his longtime collaborator, Takashi Tezuka, must be Mario's mother. Koji Kondo, the talented musician, must be his uncle. Yoshiko Koizumi, with whom Miyamoto has fought for creative control of the Mario franchise, must be Mario's stepfather. Nintendo games are not made by a single visionary genius who bestows all necessary wisdom on his underlings. Every game the company releases is a collaborative process. 
Miyamoto alone is not responsible for his games. He is not a creative wunderkind, but rather a part of a far larger team who rely on each other. Indeed, Miyamoto's greatest skill may well be his ability to manage a project, to bring out the best in the developers around him, and to steer his talented peers in new and interesting directions. Miyamoto's success comes from the fact that he has needed to rely on others to make his ideas bear fruit, and it is because he's so willing to sacrifice other people's previous efforts that Nintendo has won its reputation for consistent quality in game design. It's for this reason that so many of Nintendo's most popular games, at one point or another during development, suffered a trademark Miyamoto table flip. The moral of the story is that sometimes, in order to make something good, you have to go against the grain.